Hello and welcome to the appointment. I am Pranjal Sharma. Today I will be talking to Sudhir Rao. He is the Chairman and Managing Director of Skoda Auto India. Sudhir, thanks very much for being with us uh, on the appointment. Pleasure, Pranjal. Sudhir, uh, Skoda has been in India for quite a long while. Um, give us a sense of where you are today uh, in terms of the models, your revenues, your size of operations. Sure. We have been in the country just about 14 years now. Uh, we uh, have a strength of about a thousand people directly uh, and about two thousand people from a spin-off perspective. Um, we uh, continue to operate primarily out of Aurangabad and we have four um, very successful models in our range. At the top end we have the Superb and then we have the Rapid uh, at the bottom end and in the middle, in the middle of course we have our, you know, the first uh, car that we launched in the country, the Octavia and then the unique SUV, the Yeti. So we are a four product company today. We were a five product company, but as part of our evolving strategy, we have temporarily become a four product company. Um, as far as sales are concerned, uh, we will end this year at about 17,500. And for a company that is just below the luxury manufacturers, we are you know, we, uh, the class leading, uh, highest selling, you know, value luxury uh, brand in the country. It's also interesting that in the Indian passenger uh, vehicle market, uh, the new segments which are uh, being either artificially created or are emerging as the consumer uh, needs evolve. Um, to that extent, do you see Skoda trying to take that leap of uh, creating a segment or exploiting a new segment or do you think that your current strengths are what you will build on? Um, so our product portfolio is not one that straddles many many segments we want to do a very very good job in the few segments that we operate in so I don't believe we are going to be in a position in the next four or five years to create new segments you know we're not going to be in that position and it's it's okay with us what kind of uh, growth uh, plans do you have now for Skoda in terms of uh, maybe expanding the portfolio uh, in terms of maybe creating uh, uh, perhaps a car or a vehicle only for India in terms of perhaps uh, you know bringing one of your existing global models and adapt it to India. How do you see this evolving? We have learned a lot especially in the last two three years Pranjal about how to develop cars that are better suited to India. Um, we are going to be launching one car next year that will be uh, an, epi uh, an epitomization of these learnings. We are fairly confident that we will also come back into the Fabia segment with this strategy of finding a happy medium between our European orientation of products and the Indian needs. So that I think is a big learning for us. We think we will end up probably at about a 50 to 75,000 unit size uh, in a period of about you know five years. You know, taking it currently from about 17,000 to 20,000 today that we are at. So this is going to be a gradual strategy. Um, one of the other things that we are also going to do is ride and if not ride lead, um, in fact we would prefer to lead this whole movement about safety. Um, you know today our cars for example the Superb has 8 airbags, the Octavia has 6 airbags. I mean we are very well known for safety. So I think these trends we are going to you know either create or ride on and that is what is going to give us the growth. We don't want to artificially boost our size in the country. We want to do that in a sustainable way and we want to do that in a way that makes customers happy with us both with our products and, and the brand image that we stand for. Right, uh, so let me take a small uh, break over here Sudhir, but I want to talk about some of your experience in manufacturing in India. Uh, once we come back on the appointment, I will continue the conversation with Sudhir Rao, Chairman and Managing Director of Skoda Auto India and talk about his experience in uh, Make in India, how the manufacturing ecosystem for automobiles in India is evolving. Stay with us on the appointment. You've joined me, Pranjal Sharma, on the appointment. I'm talking to Sudhir Rao. He's the Chairman and Managing Director of Skoda Auto India. Sudhir, so uh, of these uh, many models that you uh, sell in India, how many are manufactured in India? All four are manufactured in India, Pranjal, with varying degrees of localization. The Rapid, for example, has localization in the range of about 70%, including the local diesel engine. Uh, talking of manufacturing, and it's, a, it's a fairly significant push 
you know, not just for the country, but also for us as a company. And we totally believe in it, and I think it's much, much needed. Um, manufacturing today constitutes only about 15% of our economy, and the target of taking it to 25%, uh, I think, is very much necessary for, for India to achieve. Uh, needless to say, uh, manufacturing is a tremendous employment generator and the quality of employment it generates also is very, very important. But what has been your experience of manufacturing a European product in India? How, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, challenges have you had to overcome, but what are the benefits that you have reaped also? It, it is challenging um, because as a brand, we want to ensure that the European nature of the product remains. What that means is you have to have certain grade of steels. What that means is you have to have certain kinds of plastics, m many of which we don't have the economies of scale for today. That is a huge challenge. To come back into the related point of safety which you mentioned earlier, uh, at the industry level it appears that because of some of these challenges, the industry is not warmly embracing uh, some of the best practices and safety standards uh, uh, which exist across the world. Um, how do you see this? What, what needs to be done to get the Indian automobile manufacturing ecosystem to be far more progressive on safety standards? I think safety has to be driven both by the government and by the manufacturers, both. Um, and obviously there's a pull from the consumers as a third leg of this tool. I think the awareness among consumers is dramatically improving and we've had some unfortunate situations in the last few years that have highlighted you know, unsafe conditions. So there is a pull, uh, at least from the Škoda perspective, you know, we have products that are you know, typically Euro NCAP 5 or 4. Um, we also um, support every initiative from the government to bring in safety standards sooner than later. I mean, uh, both emissions and safety because as our, uh, our, our road systems improve and the average speed goes up, uh, these uh, factors will become more important. I completely agree. Um, unfortunately, I've had two very critical accidents, both of which you know, were caused by people who were jumping red lights and not following traffic signals. So, safety is something that is dear to my heart both personally and professionally. So, let there be no ambiguity about it. Um, I'd also like to ask for the government's support a little bit. Uh, I think there needs to be a lot more training uh, and a lot more enforcement of the government system uh, on speed related issues and fundamental traffic rules being followed. Um, it doesn't happen. Um, I don't think the auto industry alone can spread awareness of safety through any kinds of hoardings and stuff like that. There has to be government effort and imposition of laws very, very strictly. It's really an earnest appeal that I would like to make. Uh, I think that is sorely lacking and that can tremendously change this statistic, horrible statistic, of one person dying on our roads every 15 minutes. I mean, I think that is not an acceptable you know, statistic for any society to, to, to have. How do you see the uh, overall market expanding for uh, vehicles, automobile uh, vehicles and uh, the sector uh, in India? What kind of rates of growth do you see? And within that, do you see the mass market growing faster or do you see the, the, the premium and luxury segment growing faster? But it's, it's also that not just the growth rate, but the absolute numbers, how do you see that uh, coming up? I think the growth rate will improve. Um, today we are at about 4 to 5 percent. When I say today, I mean in the last 24 months or so. I think it will go back to the historical levels of 15 percent because every statistic you take from a per capita or vehicle ownership, etc., etc., is completely in the favor of, of long-term high high secular growth. And I think we will get to about this 15 percent level maybe in about 12 months or so. So that I am fairly confident about. Um, as far as the segments that will grow, uh, I am a firm believer that cars with greater safety, better ride and handling, better emission levels will improve because we are certainly noticing that customers want those characteristics. They are spending more time in their cars and they are also driving longer distances in their cars. And these attributes are going to think what will why would why do i say that also from an economic perspective the more these cars get sold the more of them start going into the used car park right. 
So a lot of, I would say, the lower end cars today, I believe are going to be replaced from a customer need perspective by the second hand cars of the better makes. So I think that's where I see this industry evolving. It will mature, it will become much higher quality cars, much more safe, robust, fuel efficient cars. So we will take a short break here, but we will come back uh, in the conversation with Sudhir Rao, Chairman and Managing Director of Skoda Auto India, and we will talk about how the, uh, the government framework and the policy framework for manufacturing in India for, for a group like his uh, needs to be improved and what are the uh, steps that he would like the government to take to make uh, life easier for him. Stay with us on the appointment. You joined me, Pranjal Sharma, on the appointment. I'm talking to Sudhir Rao, Chairman and Managing Director of Skoda Auto India. Uh, Sudhir, Make in India is now a very big uh, push from uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his government at the central level. A lot of state uh, governments are also encouraging uh, this concept. Uh, you have been manufacturing in India for a while, so you understand the joys and sorrows of doing that. Um, what can be done to improve the joy? I think um, first of all it's intent and the intent is there okay that's to my view the heart always controls everything else okay let with that behind us I also see execution improving a bit uh, what I mean by execution is that first of all for a company like us in the area of say excise administration and customs administration that is dramatically improving uh, and I see the intent and I've witnessed it um, for people the, in the government areas to want to make life a lot easier for us. Government officials have been a lot more receptive uh, with personal experience uh, in the last say eight, nine months about listening to us and also making the necessary changes in a very fair way. This to make is at the uh, national and uh, state level both? Both. We've had very good experience where people are listening and beginning to understand our problems and actually making some changes. One of the constraints that I feel still exists, Pranjal, is despite the best intentions of all concerned, there is kind of a pehle aap, pehle aap mentality that exists which is unfortunate. And what I mean by that is, you know, I sometimes hear that the political system, let's say the minister would like to do something you know the secretary may want to also do the same thing but nobody wants to kind of take the first step to make a decision that moves in a slightly different direction and I've always wondered why um, government can't kind of take the following approach that at least we as a corporate take that people sit together in one meeting document the facts about why a decision was jointly made between the political system and the official system minute it sign it and move on just document it so that you know everybody is clear that it was a consensus decision that was made for certain reasons. I find it surprising that despite some of the brightest minds in the auto industry, why haven't they come together in a more coherent fashion to do the skilling? Because you know a person who is skilled for the auto industry is not going to go and join uh, you know the services sector or the hospitality industry. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for thinking of us as very intelligent people. <laughs> so appreciate that. Um, uh, but. But seriously, I mean, we know that we are the backbone of, of many branches um, and just the nature of the industry being what it is. So we are working together. I mean, we are working together with the National Skill Development Council and then we've got an automotive branch to that. Um, and we are trying to use the technicians that are coming out of the system into our dealerships. We have an active dialogue going on. So we are actually doing that. And, um, and I think we will... Uh, support in every way the overall skill development and the eco economic uh, and employment generating aspects of the industry. There is an the impression which is created sometimes today that you know the some of these issues of skill development and you know ensuring that there is talent. The industry is not just an automobile. Many industry leaders uh, put their entire uh, onus on the government, and they said you know just give us the skill guys. We are not going to do anything about it. And I think that. Uh, tends to undermine the the image that an industry association has. Um, I can only talk for Skoda, Pranjal. 
we have a very very active internship program uh, both for skills uh, in the on the factory floor as well as for lower levels of management we take interns in from universities and iti's train them teach them uh, the factory way and then you know either they can join us if we have the opportunity or they can move on and do other things i very very firmly believe in it uh, i think that education and skills are something that the private sector can play a huge role in and we as coda are actually doing that as well finally so dear as we come to the end of our conversation uh, a quick uh, uh, question and discussion about research and development and designing uh, where where does uh, could a stand on that and how do you see that evolving because the the home grown automobile companies in india say that we designing everything in india and you know we are we are really doing it while the global companies uh, import everything um, do you see that uh, situation changing do you think there there is enough talent and uh, the right ecosystem in india for uh, completely creating a concept of a car and then building it and taking it to its logical end i don't think it exists today but certainly uh, we have taken you know many steps towards that direction uh, just as an example one of the cars that we are going to be launching next year we have used local engineering talent resources and capability to do a lot of work on that car uh, so i think it is something that is evolving it only comes with time and practice um, it's a long gap that one has to bridge but i think many companies in the auto industry have gone down that path certainly as skoda and vw group we too have uh, you know started very strong strong steps in that direction and you're going to see more and more of that you know it's also an economic need you know when you take such an approach you tend to reduce your cost by 25 to 30% mm -hmm. and when one is trying to develop a sustainable business model like skoda is in a very very competitive market like india you have to do these things so i think the market will dictate it obviously the talent is there um you can argue about some of the quality of the engineering institutes but i think um industry is making very very strong steps and linkages with iits nits and certain other institutes that specialize in automobile engineering so that is going to happen i would say that even a multinational you will see completely home grown products in the next say 8 years yeah that's a very positive uh, thought to close the discussion with uh, sudhi thanks very much for being on the appointment thank you very much pranjal